Hi. This time we are going to continue with this series where I talk about these 17 Japanese occult games and rituals and whatnot. I'm going to give you my thoughts on it as an occultist. If you haven't seen the other parts of this video, especially part one, where I explain some fundamental things, uh, please check them out because otherwise this video may not make too much sense in some cases. Okay, uh, and beforehand, as always, I apologize if the video gets slightly choppy when I use the mouse to uh, play and pause the video. I hope it will be minimal. Okay, let's get started. One person telephone. This one's for a special kind of person, a thrill seeker to the end. What you'll need is a flashlight salt, an amulet or sacred talisman to act as a protective charm, a landline phone, and a cell phone. Do note, you might want to use a burner phone instead of your personal cell. Step 1. In the middle of the night, turn off all the lights in your home and make sure you are completely alone. Step 2. Take everything except the landline into the bathroom. Sprinkle salt in front of the bathroom door, then close and lock the door. Step 3. Turn on your flashlight and aim at the toilet, keeping an eye on the water within. Step 4. Okay, I'm going to pause real quick. There are many like Japanese urban legends concerning the toilet, the bathroom, but this is not exclusive to them. Although, funny enough, like I mentioned about Japan and Russia having some similarities when it comes to sorcerous things, paranormal things. In Russia, it is also quite common to see some paranormal things in bathhouses, especially old bathhouses. This is because in places where there is water, that water is used as a sort of battery or even conduit to summon certain entities and powers. It is quite common when someone is attempting to perhaps work with the water elemental forces. You wouldn't believe it unless you are an occultist or you have seen, you're an experienced occultist. It is quite common if you get those entities angry, you will have water related problems. The flooded basement, the toilet suddenly breaking and the water just pouring out like crazy. And so you can see the reason as to why there are sometimes these games or rituals related to bathrooms, bathhouses, toilets. It's because of the water. You could say that perhaps that is the reason why so many islands, take a look at different islands in the world, including Japan. They are, because they are surrounded, there is so much water around them when compared to their land mass. It is a hotspot for paranormal activity. Sadly, so many people ignore the finer points of this phenomena. So in most cases, they are at their mercy. That's why there are so many Japanese horror films with super powered demons, ghosts, etc. They do not know how to handle the situations. Let's continue. Use your cell phone to call the landline phone. You'll hear it ring in the other room. If the phone is allowed to ring until you hear the voicemail, try again. If you see the water level in the toilet begin to change, hang up, turn on the lights, and sprinkle salt around the toilet. Now, if something answers the phone, shout as loud as you can, BAKA, and hang up. You basically just prank called a ghost. Now, d Very stupid game. Yes, it's just to attempt to prank call a, a spirit. It is quite common that phones and even radio, there are some situations where some sort of entity is speaking uh, to you through the speaker, through the sort of device that you are using. It's very mysterious. There are also these rumors about people from the past or from the future uh, communicating with you through the phone, through the computer through pretty much any device. 
in many cases, they are just stories made up. In other cases, there could be some truth to things. One of my friends actually received an email from a relative. That, and that relative pretty much sent the email after he had died. Now, you could say perhaps it was like a prank. That was not, I knew the man, and he was not the sort of person to, to make those sorts of pranks. Because you could actually program things so that you would send an email after you have died or passed away. And so it's very enigmatic. In occult philosophy, it is considered that many of the objects in our material world have a sort of double or replica on the other side. I know that a lot of you that are watching this video because they are Japanese rituals and occult games, you are uh, you like anime and manga. You may remember this anime, uh, the name Occultic Nine. In Occultic Nine, they handled that really cool anime. In fact, if you things are very hectic at the start of the anime, but if you manage to tolerate tolerate the hecticness and some the fan service, I, I actually like fan service, so it's okay for me. But if you get past that, you will see that there are some important lessons within that anime. One of the, my favorite occult anime, in fact. I have actually played it in front of serious occultists. And at first they were like, they thought I was pranking them because of the fan service and the hectic nature of the anime, hectic sequences. But then they were like, oh, this is amazing, beautiful. So yes, um, so maybe they use like the devices on the other side to communicate with this side. That's why in uh, when it comes to ancient burial traditions, they bury the warriors, the rulers, etc., with their weapons, their tools, everything, because that way they are placing all of that uh, close to them. When they make the transition, they awaken on the other side with all of those. Mm. Well, in some cases, it could be ethereal or astral versions of those objects. Let's continue. Oh, uh, by the way, this ritual is very silly and the idiotic. You're going to get in trouble with entities. There is a small chance that you get, you'll get you get in trouble with these entities and suddenly bad luck is going to happen to you. You're going to have health problems, uh, money problems. You're going to be incompetent in many things, all of that. The salt supposedly should is used to keep you safe from the entity. But there are some very powerful entities. When it comes to salt, it, wo it works with almost everything. But for how long? Unless you, are, you actually you are attempting to destroy that entity, it is a very risky maneuver, in my opinion. Let's continue. Destroy the cell phone, turn on all the lights, and shower the landline phone in salt. If you hear any sounds or see things get knocked over, throw salt in the direction of this happening. The spirits you just pranked might be reasonably upset, but as long as you keep flinging salt and keep your protective charm handy, nothing should do you any harm. Incredibly risky, and they don't tell you what protective charm. Not all of the charms work. There are some that are extremely powerful and very cost-effective or relatively simple to make. The only difficult part is working with the symbols, understanding the power of those symbols. But yes, it's nonsensical. Why would you risk doing all of that? These entities, they are existing in a different time sequence. Let's put it like that, different time. And sometimes it seems as if they have all of the time in the world to attack you. So eventually you will have to go to sleep. Eventually you will have to eat. You will have to go to the bathroom. Funny story. There is this um, legend that in the Middle Ages, there was this priest. Priests are terrible. When it comes to handling the supernatural, you will see many cases, all of the cases I would say, where a priest of this or that religion, they fail miserably against the entities. When they succeed, it's actually propaganda. 
but that's because the entities don't care about your idols. They don't care about your uh, dogma and doctrine. They don't care about Jesus. If you face a demon and you're like, Jesus, protect me. And the entity is going to be, Jesus who? Who's that? Who? They don't care about your religious idols, your made up myths, borrowed myths, taking legends from Apollonius, Apollonius of Tiana or Simon the Mage. They don't care about any of your made up stories. So when you use that name, the, the attack is going to enter even easier. Don't believe me, just try it. Go to a verified, a cursed spot. One of those places in the world where you can, there are actually, that is, if you want to find out the truth, normally I would advise against it. But if you are searching for the truth, go to one of those violently haunted hotspots. Don't tell anyone else about it because maybe someone could uh, hide and prank you. Make sure that you are interacting with the forces. And when they start to attack you, Say the name of any idol, Jesus, Mohammed, it's going to be worthless. They have no power. They are cult leaders, dead cult leaders. Okay, let's continue. White kimono. Need a way to spice up your dreams? This is the game for you, although it's a bit risky. Step one. Between 2 and 3 a.m., lie down on your bed. Starting at the no Okay. When it comes to 3 a.m., I think this ritual, for it to work perfectly, it would need to be 3 a.m. Because 3 o'clock, despite all of those distortions that they handle, that, oh, the time-saving sa schedule, there is actually a set time. As you investigate the mysteries of the world, there is a, actually a way to measure or calculate the time precisely. The first hour is the hour when the sun first appears. I'm going to say appears, not rises. A lot of you know what I mean, this lie that has been propagated. Those of you that do not know about that, please check out my science fiction video in the description. So the moment when the sun first appears or is visible, the moment when the sun is first visible, that's when the clock starts to tick when you have like the first hour of the day, the beginning of the first hour of the day. And then through semi-complex calculations, you start to count the uh, 24 hours. The well, We consider the three o'clock represents the triangle in numbers. The triangle has three sides, of course, and three points, three angles from which Energies can enter. That's why you have the, the mystery of Abra Cadabra. There is a mystery where that word is actually, it starts very small. It's somewhat complex, but it starts to multiply. You have A, AV, AVR, AVRA, and, and it starts to create like a sort of inverse funnel. The three is that inverse funnel, taking things from the infinite, from the invisible realms, and manifesting them into reality. So the three represents that sort of summoning triangle. This ritual, it appears to be a sort of summon a, a spiritual concert sort of thing. That is in order for you to have sex, sexual, I don't know if you do, yeah, I don't think, uh, let's say intimate encounters with this entity. Let's continue north corner of your bedroom ceiling slowly look at the four corners of the ceiling one by one going okay you're looking at north first the north is the direction of evil and destruction many summonings have to do with the north especially when it comes to the north east you're taking advantage of the energy of the sun that right that is brought forth through the east, the sun appears in the east. The current of energy gets started. The north is the destructive side. It is related to a for an archetypical or universal force of destruction. So when you are anything related to operations of summoning chaotic or destructive energies, it's usually 
you are facing the north or northeast. In most cases, the northeast to take advantage of the north and the energy from the east. That's why in many houses where there is there are disturbances, they usually do not have anything in the northeast corner. In the northeast corner of your house, of your room, all of the northeast corners should have some sort of thing blocking it. A plant, furniture, bookcase. You must have that corner blocked. Otherwise, it, it serves as an entrance for chaotic, disruptive energies. So as you can see in this ritual, you are facing the north. You are obviously coming so calling upon something that is not good. The north, in my opinion, is the worst facing possible. So now you're looking at the corners. You're, it seems as if you threw your eyes. The eyes project energy. That's why when suddenly you're walking down the street or you are at a party or in a gathering and you feel like someone is looking at you and you turn around and someone is actually looking at you because the eyes project energy. Through your eyes, you are creating this sort of energy web by looking at the corners of the room to facilitate this summoning. Let's continue. Counterclockwise. Repeat this three times. Let me go back Step a bit. Step two. With your arms crossed. One. Going counterclockwise. Counterclockwise. You're definitely going to summon something quite chaotic. Very dangerous ritual. Okay, let's continue. Repeat this three times. Step two. With your three times the number of manifestation, the triangle, the summoning triangle. You can use counterclockwise in some rituals or works to destroy, vanquish, banish things. But in case of a summoning, you're going to end up calling upon if it's successful there is a high prob probability of failing but if the ritual is successful you're going to be calling upon something dangerous let's continue your arms crossed over your chest repeat the following mantra three times on beiro kia mashironi sawaka step three pause well terrible pronunciation on the youtubers part of the japanese words but crossing your arms, that's also, in some cases, putting a cross over your chest, it uh, shields you from things entering it. That's where the whole thing with the cross hanging from your neck, that is not a Christian tradition. As always, Christians always stealing the traditions from others. The cross has existed in so many other places and times before Christianity. In fact, the Christian, the Christian cross is one of the worst symbols that you can use to ward off evil because you have defiled the, the cross by placing the uh, cultist, the cadaver of the cultist, Jesus. When you place that corpse over the corpse, over the cross, sorry, you are defiling the cross. You should use a normal cross with no corpse hanging from it. Preferably a silver cross. Silver has antibacterial properties and therefore also affects beings from the invisible realm. When it comes to an advanced occultist, you have great is, or you are highly skilled when using your own energies. It is actually better for you not to have a cross because that also seals away your own power. If you need to project some energy of destruction against your enemies or the entities or whatever, the cross actually prohibits you from doing so. That's also a method of Christianity of weakening or negating, canceling, destroying your psychic potential. You know, in that ceremony where they put a cross over your pineal and pineal glands, the centers, the most powerful centers of psychic energy in the body, they are placing a cross over you to cancel you, to block you. You are not, no longer able to use your psychic abilities and powers. You are not able to see things clearly. They use ash because ash contains calcium. The calcium is absorbed through the skin into, into the uh, 
body and it creates a calcium shell over your pineal and pineal pineal and pituitary glands sorry they are basically nullifying you making you ship they are making you ship to uh, so that it is easier to control you let's continue imagine a woman with long black hair dressed in a blood covered white kimono slowly creeping towards you step four keep imagining the woman creeping closer and closer until she appears to be right in front of your eyes this also is very japanese you know how the government etc in japan even in, in some cases religion they have managed to distort the positive interactions between man and woman that's why japan is currently experiencing those problems with birth rates japanese men and even women but when it comes to men that are sexually active they have this path mental pathology they are desperate to obtain a wife to experience the pleasures of the flesh but they cannot do it. They don't have time to do so. There are so many taboos. Everything has to follow a Japanese protocol. There are so many things against people interacting. I don't know the current school situation, but in Japan, the interactions between male and female students were quite limited. Maybe in current times, they are eliminating that. Who knows? So there are these mental problems that are caused through all of this. And in Japan, there is always this attempt of having waifus, you know, the that man who actually married a waifu, legally married to a waifu. Oh my God. I think you should be able to enjoy anime, manga, in any sort of way, video games. From ancient times, the humans have drawn their waifus on the walls of caverns, the cavemen. They have their cavern waifus, their sculptures of waifus. And they never had those fertility problems. This is all related to the social engineering in modern society. YouTube, this is all science fiction. Don't take out this, don't take down this video. This is all science fiction. The pilots in wars, when they painted their waifus on their planes, that's perfectly healthy and fine. They're uh, inspirational art. But when it comes to these pathologies, yeah, there are some problems there. In this case, there are probably des desperate people that want to summon these ghostly waifus to have in intimate encounters with them. These are you're calling upon an, a dangerous entity in this case, a demon. Let's continue. Step five: uncross your arms, turn off the lights, and go to sleep. That woman you imagined will appear in your dreams. If the woman comes close to you, do not speak to her. If she asks for your name, do not give it to her. If the woman tries to mutter something in your right ear, immediately shake your right hand, and this should wake you up from the dream. When you wake up, look around. If all looks to be the same, then you're safe. However, if you see the black shadow of a woman in any of the corners of the room, She's gotten out, and you should probably start running. Okay. Yes, this is a variation of that sort of, of summoning rituals. Don't do it. This is going to summon an evil creature. In shamanic traditions, you have something called the shaman's wife. It's a similar process, but it is built in a safer way. And when I call, when I refer to shamans, I don't talk about those people that are constantly consuming drugs and having all sorts of trips. I'm coming, call, talking about real uh, shamans that make those contacts without destroying their brains through substances. There is a ritual to call upon this uh, shamanistic or shamanic or shaman wife. It's basically a spiritual entity. The during those procedures. There is actually intercourse with that entity and it becomes like a protector of the shaman. But like I said, it should be something usually 
it is a being of the world of the fae. You know, the fae beings, you know, like what you would consider in the folkloric sense, elves, mm, air spirits, water, water spirits, all sorts of creatures. Those rituals are a way of connecting or contacting those beings. And then you have your, your shaman wife. It sounds almost like a meme, but those are actual rituals in occult philosophy. But in this case, you're basically summoning some sort of vampiric, vampiric demon, in my opinion, by the looks of it. And that's a, a very unstable thing of handling things. What's that? Oh, if you messed up, the entity is now in your room and you need to run. Run for how long? Eventually, you will get tired. How will you rid yourself from that entity? Why did you summon it in the first place? Like I said, it seems to me like a distortion of the shamanic wife summoning. Yes, don't do that ritual. It's highly unstable, this ritual. It is possible for shamans, occultists to do the shamanic wife ritual, but it would still be quite risky in my opinion. That's for experts. And probably for single experts, I don't know if your real life girlfriend or wife could uh, feel jealous about that. Yeah, it's a, I'll leave that. I'll leave that to your consideration. I'm going to stop this now. I will continue with this series. Let's see. Let's see if tomorrow or the day after, because tomorrow I'm going to be running my uh, Super Mash Bro actual play online. Let's see if I uh, actually have time for that. Please check it out. Uh, I'm going to upload the video before midnight tomorrow, probably about 6 uh, Central Standard Time. I, ho I hope you will watch it. Once again, thank you for watching this video. If you have any comments or questions, please let me know. And thank you so much to those of you that are further supporting this channel. If anyone else wishes to further support the channel, the information on how to do that will be in the description below. And remember, it is better to roleplay and fail in character than not to roleplay and fail as a player. Once again, thank you. And see you later.